Hopefully, hopefully people can hear me. Let's see. I'll wait for it to hear up. I should should be hearing here at some point. Hashtag out of sound. <clears throat> New YouTube channel. <laughs> oh man. Um. There we go. <laughs> okay, we have audio. Sorry, we had to wait and confirm hopefully, we hopefully actually have audio. Let's see. Um, to hear up. Sorry about that, guys. I, uh, I should, yeah. should be here and here at some point. Out of sound. So, um, as I was saying, the streaming stuff is always uh, a challenge, especially if you're trying to make it look good and have any level of actual quality. Um, we're trying something different today. I'm going to wander around the warehouse and give you guys a behind the scenes look here, kind of a little teaser to a future video, which will be a full like in-depth in warehouse video. Uh, we have this little iPhone cam that's set up on wireless and I'm on a wireless lob. So in theory, we should be able to roam around the warehouse, answer your questions, point out things or look at stuff that you wanna see. Uh, so do throw the questions in there and we'll kind of get going. Um, Bobo's asking what lav system is that? So we just got this new guy which is uh, the Rode Wireless Go. And it's only been a couple videos so far, Perry? Uh, yeah, just uh, one or two. Yeah, a couple videos, and so far so good. It's um, about a $300 setup for two, two transmitters and one receiver, and they're just tiny, which is super cool, and the receiver's this size as well. So I'm uh, really excited about that. You can also plug these directly into your computer through USB-C and use them as an audio interface. So there's kind of some nice like flexible options there. Uh, we're hoping that'll be a little easier. We used to do a separate system audio, so we would have basically a, basically a blind recorder. So the, the lav pack that was connected to me wasn't transmitting anywhere, whereas this one's actually wireless. Wireless can be a huge headache <laughs> at times. So this is a digital system. It's supposed to be relatively, relatively, uh, Simpler. Uh, Daniel Rogan says, do this earlier next time. I'm not sure what you mean by earlier, but we will keep playing with the time slots and days and just seeing, really just trying to see which day gets the most people on. Um, thank you for coming. Glad you're hanging out here. Um, appreciate you coming by. Uh, and obviously appreciate all your support for the shop. We uh, love doing all this, but couldn't do any of it without you. So really super, super glad. Um, Eclipse Alive says, could I build, do more pre-built Jupiters? We've been wanting to do more, but um, I'll, you'll see some of the stuff that we're working on here as far as like the mess and, and getting tidy and organized. And we just have a few projects that have to be done first. Um, namely, like my workshop really needs some actual <laughs> cleanup and organization. And we're making some progress. Every week it gets a little bit better, but it does take some time. So once we someday come out with once we've caught up on the warehouse stuff, we'll come out with the pre-builds again. Um, question about arm mounts. Maybe I'll let you curate questions, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, Luke and Perry, would you be interested in offering hardware kits? The Hummingbird, Calendar, et cetera. Yes. Who's that question from? Uh, that is from Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Yeah, we're, we're, um, we're already working on a couple hardware kits for 3D printed blasters, different varieties. I, I would someday like to carry literally every hardware kit out there because we already have the sort of the parts, the sorting, a lot of the hardware in stock. So it would make sense to do more kits. One of our big focuses in the next um, six months is going to be to make more blaster mod kits too, specific curated, like this is my high power strife kit, this is my low power strife kit. Those already exist on the site, but they kind of exist in a weird way where it's this clunky app that selects all the individual items and that's an inventory control thing where we um, can't, we want every, the inventory to stay really accurate. So we're working on a different system for that where we're going to pre-make the kits where they will be bundled and ready to go. Um, which will make shipping a little bit easier. And then when we get to that point, we'll also be set up to start finally doing like bulwark kits I'd like to do. And Hummingbird would be cool, cool too. I'll talk to Timmy about that. Um, we would never want to sell a hardware kit if the creator of the original file didn't want us to. So we're going to reach out and make sure we talk to those people um, before just, you know, jumping on their, stepping on their toes, so to speak. Uh, when did you meet Perry? Um, eight months ago? Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was August when yeah. we, you interviewed me, so. Yeah, back in August, I guess. Um, yeah, I put a, I put a, um, 
Well, I figured the best way to find a video person was just to put up a job notice on the job boards for at the local local the only film program around here. I think it's the only film program around here. Uh, yeah, uh, like state universities. Uh, yeah, there's always the art institutes and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. But um, and in the Bay Area, like I, there probably would have been hundreds of, of people I could have found because I knew I had my network there. But up here, I have no network. So, um, but it's worked out really, really well because it turns out. Um, I have, you know, my streaming experience was as a camera operator in the film industry, so I worked on some streams with some really pro crews, but did none of this stuff, none of the interface stuff, none of the broadcast stuff. I just ran a camera and plugged in either a wireless bridge or a BNC cable. Um, so my experience was not very good for doing this, but Perry happens to know a lot more about this and has been helping us get this all figured out and every week is like a different <laughs> different one. Uh, what's your opinion on Hyper, Jeremy? Oh, Hyper. So, oh, speaking of which, hold on, hold on, because this could be fun. Hey, Greg or anybody, could someone get mail? Ask Greg to do it. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm back, sorry. Hyper, um, I'm hyped. <laughs> I, I did see Drax's video, he, I'm sure you've all seen it already, but he did a video on the, uh, what, Jab 40? Is that still what it's called? It's the 40 round top slide pistol. I think Jab was the, the code name. Jab was name. the code name. It's called Rush. Rush 40, that's it. Yeah, I, I, you know, I've been thinking about the code names for so long, it's hard to say. But I'm really excited. The, the videos so far do not look good. Um, Sophie, Sophie Lightning on, on her reviews, like it clearly did not fire very straight, very far, or very consistently, and it sounds really loud. Now I'm hopeful that that like grinding noise in the Mach 100, she had the, the hopper, the Percy's equivalent. I'm hoping that grinding noise is just loud because of her mic placement and the fact that the flywheels and battery system are stock so that they're not spinning up loud enough to cover up that grinding gear noise of the feed system. But it, it didn't look promising. And I'd say the, um, the 40 or the, the other one, the um, Aaron Esser's video, the pump action one, which it looks like one of the more promising ones, he had endless misfires. And then Drac, kind of same thing with the Rush 40. It does not look promising for the ammo. The only thing I'm hoping is like, as that ammo gets dirtier and gets dust on it and stuff, that maybe it'll be less sticky. Um, but obviously, I mean, the second it gets here, the second I get my hand in the ammo, I'm gonna be firing it out of this firing it out, trying to figure out what I need to do to redesign a proton pack, like playing around. I'm gonna upgrade every single one of those blasters, assuming they're not solvent welded or something, which it looks like they're not. I'm sure we'll hear from Drax soon, but I'm really excited. I do wonder about losing the ammo. Rival's already tough with rolling away and stuff, and the new ammo looks, I guess, pretty bouncy, and then of course it's small. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm still anticipating them to be pretty popular and whatnot, and I think you know, indoor play could be fun no matter what. So I think we'll all be doing springs for all the springers. We'll be doing plates and cages and, and wheels, hopefully for everything. I mean, it's our plan to cut, to support all of it. Uh, I am Bobo Lolo says free idea out of darts calendar. Your pictures are fantastic. And I'd like a nerf based calendar, a nerf based calendar. The calendar. I'm literally, I'm literally adding that to my, my list here. I think it'd be fun to do like a community one. Nerf calendar, suggested by Bobo. While you're doing that, uh, everybody said they wanted a Perry reveal, so hi. <gasps> you gotta come in focus though. Oh, pardon me. Yeah, hello. This you, is Perry. You can't, you can't hear me. I, I know I have a mic on. They can probably hear me. You can probably hear you a little bit through here. Probably a little bit. <laughs> Yep, he makes all the videos go. Um, actually, and it, it, the business has gotten to a point where like, if I didn't have Perry, we wouldn't get any videos done, uh, despite it being probably like, but we don't spend any, we don't do any advertising. So I guess you, uh, Instagram and stuff and Instagram, YouTube. Uh, what else do we do now? Oh yeah, we're on TikTok now. Yeah. You can find us on TikTok. We did our first talk tick. Yeah. We uh, need to, I'm learning. Um, yeah. You said subscribe instead of follow. Yeah, I said subscribe instead of follow. So we'll figure that out. Um, they say we hear you, Perry, but probably on here. <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of a delay. <laughs> um, what do I use for 3D modeling? I saw Aussie's Adaptations says. Um, I've covered this in previous videos, but we do use Fusion, 
Fusion 360, incredible software, really versatile. Um, took me a while to learn. Are any of them ammo? Open them up. <laughs> um, the reason I had Greg go get the, the mail is that I forgot to check the mail, and there's a chance there might be hyper ammo in there. And I'll do a whole video on ammo speculation and discussion once I have the ammo. Is it? Nope. <laughs> it's just a customer return. <laughs> Maybe that one will be. Oh. Uh, Beret says the future of the hobby is Roblox and TikTok. Oh, yeah. Roblox and TikTok. Um, I think Brett, Brett is pretty much, Beret rather, is just dominating that. <laughs> Oh, spam! Your uh, proton pack got built uh, and I think went out today? No, it still needs to be built. Oh, wait a minute. No, it needs to be actually built. We got more to do. It'll be next week, spam. I promise. <laughs> no, it won't. Wait, Greg will finish it. <laughs> you can figure it out. Greg, uh, Greg is going to build yours next week <laughs> because I'm going out of town for the first time since before COVID started. Jay Shaw uh, asks, what do you think of electric stringers like the Stampede? Oh, they're super fun. I mean, there's a limit to how far they can be modded because you're always reliant on a gearbox. I think, especially with Hyper, we might start seeing, we might start seeing that style come back or even with these, um, uh, I mean, I think we might see with short darts too, with some of these airsoft companies that are maybe going to pivot to, uh, or rather gel blaster companies in China that are pivoting from gel blasters being banned to dart, dart blasters. Um, so I'm hopeful, there have been some teasers online, but it's kind of hard to tell whether any of those were legitimate companies or if they were just a designer concept or whatever. But I think we're gonna see some more and it probably won't be from Hasbro because it's kind of a, gears are probably more expensive. Uh, gear and motor and all that extra, it costs more than a regular Springer or, no, what the, huh? What is that? It's for an airsoft. Wait, what? It's an airsoft mag. Someone sent me an airsoft mag. I don't have an airsoft gun. <laughs> that makes no sense. <laughs> uh, where is the Ultra 7 for, uh, or slash Faro conversion kit? Um, as far as... I think worker sells it. We haven't received that yet, have we? The Faro conversion kit? No. Nah. I don't think so. It's, I mean, it's ordered is what I should say. So we should have it within the next two to four weeks would be a, a hodgepodge guess. The, the uh, shipping the, this year in supply chain has been a little uh, wonky to say, to, to phrase it nicely, I guess. I, um, we never have a clue where our, our freight is and it, everything's more delayed and takes longer through customs on both ends, China and in the US. Ooh, Alex asks, um, Alex Chavez asks, is it possible to make a, a hyper conversion kit for rival blasters? Um, some of the blasters might be able to do that. I suspect with the sticky ammo, it's going to be quite a bit of work to get any of the existing ones to consistently fire the new ammo because it's both smaller and is supposed to be really dense and sticky. And the agitators are probably not going to be properly spaced. Yeah, I think it's going to be tough. Um, I think my Jupiter, with just a, a slight change in the flywheel gap, will do it immediately. Um, in fact, it will probably fire it as is so-so, and then we tighten up this, um, the, the spacing between those flywheels, which is a simple, almost trivial design change, um, and we, we should be able to very easily fire them out of there. In fact, that's one of the first projects I'm going to do when I get a hold of the ammo, is to see how many balls fit in the tube, what kind of designs we could do around that, and how we could adapt Jupiter to possibly shoot to shoot it. I think it will take a new cage, though, to do it well. Are you going to sell the uh, uh, Ultra 2 uh, Elite Conversion Kit? Am I going to sell the Elite? Uh, the, the Ultra 2, the Elite Conversion Kit with the new Oh, that was, uh, that was somewhat uh, undecided. One of the parts is a little problematic with Printing, so we were we were a little worried, wanted to stress test that more, and one of the things was just like to, to actually get out to a game and play. But we're hoping to have games maybe in June. Um, yeah, well, we might do it. Um, we're playing, we're still playing a little bit of catch up, and then we'll be ramping up a lot more products over the next couple months. A lot of smaller 
accessories and mods and parts because I'm, I've been pretty far behind on that, especially um, 3D designs and springs. But the Proton Pack kind of took, um, took me months to get the final polish done and, and get it actually launched, months and months. So it, it ate up a lot of design time and I literally didn't let myself do anything else but that during that time. Should I, should not, I not get the Worker Hurricane? I love the Worker Hurricane. I think it's a fun little goofy blaster, six shots, super fun. I like it. Yep. Uh, would a hop up make fighter blasters more accurate? Uh, it definitely make them fly farther. It might make them more accurate. Um, I'm a little surprised. It doesn't seem any of the three blasters have a hop up. And I, I'm going to take a guess that they couldn't get the performance high enough with a hop up. Because the thing is, like, not to keep bringing out Jupiter for forever, but if you take the hop up out of here, out of Jupiter even, you gain five, around five to six FPS. Um, so your actual performance number goes down with the hop up, but your range and accuracy usually improves. So I'm sure it's gonna be possible to make one. And I think that's one of the first mod parts we're gonna be looking at doing, uh, certainly at least testing to see whether it's viable. Um, but there might be something else at play there. I, I suspect though, if we're gonna upgrade the spring, upgrade the motors, the battery system, all that, the flywheels, and then we had a hop up, I would bet we can get better accuracy. And really what that's about is, rather than the ball coming you know, straight out of the flywheels um, with whatever spin happens to come out based on how the flywheels gripped, it gets unified in the same direction with the hop up. And then you get that little bit of extra range if the hop up is dialed in just right. So. I think that could be could definitely improve accuracy because those shots Drac was showing were not promising, and that was stock. You guys got to remember, I, I don't know if you've shot a stock uh, rival blaster, but most of them are actually really accurate. At, at like 30 feet, 35 feet, they're good, they're solid. Um, I can't tell from videos like, we're watching those curve on Drac's video, like how far was that? It, it's, so, it's so hard until I've got the blasters in my hands, and it sounds like late summer, Midsummer? I don't know. I would, it'd be nice to... They said coming out in June, at least with the Mach 100. Oh, June? That's, that's really soon. Yeah. I'm excited. I, I'm, I'm going to drop. I'm literally, um, my team here will know this, but when those blasters come out, I'm just going to drop everything, and that's all I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to be playing with them, modding them. I love when new stuff comes out. Um, I also have a bunch of stuff coming for the Spectrum. We're working on whole bunch of kits for that, uh, or a whole bunch of parts rather for that, because I've just, I've been behind and, and then they weren't available and I literally couldn't go buy one. Um, but there's one back there, so I'm gonna get that done too. It, it, uh, average F1 fan asks, uh, will you ever do a collab with uh, Drac to uh, design oh. a 3D printed blaster? Um, you know, it's funny, we've, uh, how much of this should I, yeah, we've, uh, Drac and I have talked. Uh, Drac and I talk, fairly frequently. Um, it's actually been fabulous having another nerfer in this sort of like, does the YouTube thing and does sell stuff now because he's gotten in, he's got a, a web shop over at uh, um, Next Level Nerf. No, Foam shoot, Pro Foam Pro shop. shop. I keep doing that. I even typed in Next Level Nerf the other day trying to find his, his shop and there's yeah, no redirect. Know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, but it's nice having other, we want, the more shops, the better, and I think it would be fun to collaborate with him on something, something in general, uh, beyond just like selling some of his products or vice versa. Um, I have a lot of ambition for future projects, and I think, you know, collaborating with someone like him would be, would be awesome, and probably it would be a, a, a good way for, a good path forward. Um, yeah, I want to do more injection molds. I said more. We've got something coming. It might still be a couple weeks, but they're here. <laughs> uh, uh, someone asked, uh, where did it go? It always comes. Um, oh, Spam says at Drax Yard from the fence to the tree uh, he was shooting at. It's uh, 35 to 45 feet. So. Oh, so they're saying 35 to 45 feet was what was in that video for that tree. That's. That's bad for Ryan. When, when he went closer to the fence, so between those okay. two distances. That's so pretty you know, rough. You know, I feel like Rival, I can't wait to do a comparison. I mean, that's, I have so many videos when this stuff drops. I mean, that's all, we're gonna be doing a lot of, a lot of uh, video content and a lot of testing and designing, kind of like when Rival came out. Cause for those 
I mean, most of you have been around wa watching me this whole time, but like Rival launched me in this in this hobby because I got so into it, and it was just a new a new thing. So I love new stuff. Um, when when is the Lynx video coming? The Lynx review. I don't know. Hey, Silver Fox, where where's my Lynx? <laughs> Hey, wait, I'm going to ask right now. <laughs> is he in here yet? Uh, I haven't seen him, I'll be honest. I've seen both YouTube both. is asking. I'm, <laughs> I'm literally messaging him. Um, as soon as I get the video, uh, the blaster from him, I will. Yeah. But uh, I'm seeing him tomorrow, so I'm going to guess that's probably when I'll get it. But then I'm gone for a week. It'll probably be a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. But I'm excited. The lift is awesome. And then there was a question about thrifting. Thrifting is awesome. Yeah. I think... The idea of just reusing stuff in general is fantastic. And I have found Strifes, Rapid Strikes, Rival Blasters, Apollo and Artemis, all functional, all great for several dollars a piece. It's, it's a great way to get, get blasters. And then you can mod and upgrade and breathe new life into this thing that maybe doesn't have much left. Uh are you going to make a, an adapter, a hurricane adapter for Proton? <laughs> um, I mean, you got this. I, I mean, oh awesome. yeah, that's, I mean, so we're probably not gonna do a, a hurricane adapter because we're gonna do this. Um, I mean, it would be cool because you would just see, you would see all the balls going through the tubes, which might be kind of neat, but I, I kind of feel like they're two separate products. One is, one is the adapter product, which this has a will have a has a swivel on this side that comes down and goes to your proton pack. But this is just so much less cumbersome than trying to run the Hurricane and this. And then additionally, you're making the fan that's in the proton pack. You're, you're making it push through all of the Hurricane tubes as well. So there's a there's more air loss and more airflow issues. So I kind of feel like it it would be a tough. It would be a tough design. It wouldn't be ideal. Um, it would look kind of cool because you'd have the, the balls would just be ever flowing. I kind of like that idea, but I don't think I don't think it makes as much sense as just a straight up adapter. This is not out yet for um, a reason. It's totally it's completely done, but the problem is the pack feeds so fast that if you throw it into here. This has no fire control like a Perseus does or like a Jupiter does because there's no wheel inside there spinning or a, a belt. Like say the Chaos, same thing. Um, you know, the Hera is single fire, so not a problem. It feeds so fast that it actually bogs the flywheels down because the first rounds that come out of the, the proton pack can feed 20 rounds a second for forever. But the first um, 30 or so rounds that come out can come out at 35 rounds a second or so. And it's enough to just like totally thrash the wheels. They can't they can't spin up enough in between shots to actually actually keep going, which kind of, um, I just didn't want to sell a product that, I didn't want to sell this adapter to you and then you go out and use it and you destroy your blaster. So essentially, I'm going to have to do a mod guide for an electronic trigger and a pusher wheel that'll be embedded in the front of this and I just haven't got around to it yet. <laughs> That's an interesting idea, but there's no question attached That's just to that. a video. It sounds like just a video idea. Rube Goldberg blasters. That could be pretty fun. I, it'd be kind of hard because most of them, it, would, it's, it kind of revolves around like a trigger and an, one ammo could shoot another, one blaster could shoot another blaster, shoots another blaster or something, but most of the blasters don't quite work that way. You could incorporate blasters into a Rube Goldberg machine. I love Rube Goldberg machines. One of my favorite, uh, television spots of all time is a Honda Honda commercial and if you haven't seen this it's a Honda commercial shot on all white it's all it's a Rube Goldberg machine machine quote unquote out of Honda parts like different various parts from the car and then the final part is that is the actual car and it is fabulous I think it took them several hundred takes to get it right but it's a I, I it's just such a neat piece of marketing uh, I'm sure you've gotten <clears throat> Offers from companies about ads or long, long time cooperation. <laughs> Anything really strange that you can share? You know, I ought to start saving them because we now get about one one a day, probably, of just weird. Um, I got one for baby toys, which was, I just don't, 
I don't know where they get these email lists. They must just get lists of YouTubers. They don't even do the research to see what you are. Um, car parts was another one. A car part, like a car part website, but for China. Um, yeah, I can't, th I'm trying to think of anything else like really funky, but they're always like completely not even close to the hobby. So, and we get them so frequently. I have a form email now that we just like send off and, um, I will not, this, this channel is like the, the reason this channel can still exist and we can still do weekly videos is because we run a nerf business. Um, like I couldn't keep this pace up as a hobbyist alone. So I feel like it's not fair to all of you to start advertising all kinds of other stuff when it already is, you know, it's a plug for the shop um, and a plug for our mods and everything. So like, I don't need dual channel. We don't need any more. <laughs> so I definitely don't, don't take any of those, but I'm going to start saving really funny ones. Cause that might make a good video. Just like read through them and be a kind of more of a beret thing, but still be good. <laughs> um, are you friends with Coop772? I like Coop. He does, as far as I'm concerned, I think he has the most thorough, consistent, concise review style that is out there. I didn't so, so much love, like there was like a middle ground where everything was like just kind of pandering to the 10 year olds um, or, you know, immaturity. Some of that's funny for a little bit, but it gets, it gets tired after a while, I think. But, but his review videos are fabulous. Um, we do definitely want to keep sending him stuff. In fact, as a reminder, I need to get him the proton pack because he was going to do the 430 round challenge and annihilate. I'm going to annihilate every previous challenge, including the like seven. Like 5x chaos. 5x chaos. Is that the record? I think so. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to destroy that. We're going to destroy that. At least I think we are. If we don't, I better send him like a duel or something. <laughs> Can your shop sponsor your own videos? Uh, pretty much every video, that, that's the definition of the channel. <laughs> I mean, we're not, I definitely make plenty of content that has nothing to do with selling anything, and I want to continue doing that. Um, but it's certainly a mix of both. Um, but I, you know, will only sell products I believe in and will only sell, you know, sponsor. No, I, really, I, I sponsor stuff. I don't really get sponsored anymore. Um, odds of batch three pro temp pack. Um, batch two is still going. We are, we're at a, um, a flow now with the orders and everything. Uh, really, I should clarify. Batch one was really about getting the first units out there, making sure everything went smoothly, fixing the production problems in our back end from printing to assembly and all of that, and making sure that we're kind of confident on that before just opening it up and hundreds and hundreds of orders come in. So um, batch two will be probably going for a considerable amount of time. It will go until we are actually out of physical parts for something, uh, because now we're ready for it. The print capacity is ready, that sort of thing. It's kind of tough to um, we want demand, but we also don't want so much, so many orders where we're just crushed under it for months, months and months and months. It's not really a fun uh, working environment <laughs> when every day there's just, you know, hundreds of orders that are still sitting there and it's been a month or two. Or We like to get things out 24, 48 hours generally, as much as possible. Get a blaster from the wall, an instant duel now. <laughs> I'm gonna find the ammo first. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to find it. No, everything's electronic. <laughs> oh boy. I, I'm gonna win. Uh, yeah, you're totally gonna win. Oh, here, let me. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> What's going on? Safety! What? No. Ah, oh, okay, I lost. <laughs> oh my gosh, I put such a hard spring in this thing. <laughs> okay, I got him. I got him once, but I, I think. Oh, I think he won. <laughs> I even started first and I lost. Oh my gosh, I forgot how hard of a spring I put in this thing. It's been so long since we've played. I miss Nerf. I really miss, uh, oh, <laughs> I like hear myself here. I really, I really miss playing.
Um, we are planning an employee, a very, very small warehouse game uh, with vaccinated people and uh, masks still, of course. But our warehouse is kind of a fun layout, so it should be a, a pretty good game. We're going to try to get like six, eight, ten GoPros on that one and run run some good some good video content on it as well. <laughs> Use the Helios. But that required finding a magazine. That was what I... Also, the Helios doesn't work very well. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, this is... Oh, this is the Kronos from the book. Someone said the Kronos is in the book. This is... Um, I still haven't painted much. Um, I've only painted one other blaster since this day. I just don't... I've never had the, the, the stuff to do it. I... Um, whoa, as I drop it. It's kind of my thing with... I, I love... This is still like my favorite color scheme and, and paint job that I've done personally if the focus would like me. It's trying to get my face. Um, but I've got to get back to painting. I just need to get an actual, some sort of booth set up here. The warehouse is, it's all one open area, so we kind of have to be careful on, you know, we don't want VOCs while people are working here and breathing the air. So it's like we almost need a rolling thing that I can take outside and then the stuff could come back in and dry or something. Um, let's see. Um, can I make an... Favorite thing I sell on the shop. I mean, right now it's probably the Proton Pack. I keep going back to that. That's not any fun. Uh, Little Rocket is also a ton of fun. I've had a lot. I can't wait to actually go throw it on every blaster I've got for games because obviously we released it and it's a pandemic, so no games. But we're definitely going to, I'm going to have some fun with that. We've got a rocket launcher attachment and another version coming. I think those are pretty exciting too. Um, but the Proton Pack's been my baby for like four years, so. In fact, the Proton Pack is older than my baby. My actual baby. <laughs> my girls. <laughs> so that's kind of a, a favorite one. Um, oh, Decepta Creeper. Hey, dude. Um, man, yeah, I, uh, I do want more painting done. I, <laughs> I definitely need to get, get that going. We should talk. <laughs> I also, I just want to paint more in general myself, but I... There's always more to do around here. And until we kind of get, how long have we been in the warehouse? Since our... uh, Since November 1st. Okay, we moved November 1st into this warehouse. Boy, it's, it's like seven months then. That's pretty, well, not quite. Yeah. We're in May. It's six months. Okay, so we've been here six months and the warehouse is pretty much settled. The workshop upstairs is not, which maybe this is a good segue to actually get, uh, let's get mobile. Um, Got this little gimbal guy, so in theory, I can give you a little tour. And, ooh! Oh weird, it's still four by three. How strange. Yeah, I'm not sure how to change that on that particular app. Here. Yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to play. Okay, so I'm gonna do, uh, <coughs> oh, maybe I can't do the wide. Can I do the other? 2x, 1x. There we go. I can do the real wide one. So um, we're up in the studio area. So this is sort of our, we're really above our office. And so um, Perry, if you want to jump on, I guess jump on comments and I'll just kind of yeah. go around. If people have questions as I go, I'll try to answer them. Mm -hmm. I'll try to lag in each spot a little bit so, so yeah. people can have time to answer because I know there's that lag. But yeah, so this is, um, this is like behind the camera here where we're normally shoot, normally filming. And then uh, blaster wall here, which is our little alcove guy. The um, elite corner of, of shame. And, you know, other blasters like Ultra tend to end up really far away from the back wall. We've got a bunch of uh, boxes here. These are all uh, different various empty filament spools because we have a video coming up on our new uh, partnership with, that is not at all what I meant to do. Sorry guys. Wow, that must have been nauseating. <laughs> I am trying to, that's not what I want. Huh. Trying that's, to go no, I was trying to go reverse. Weird. I guess it doesn't work. With so, we're trying, uh, we're in the middle of a big switchover for filament, and uh, we're actually going to switch to using uh, almost entirely protopasta, which is right here in Vancouver. Really cool filament company. They make really beautiful stuff. And um, so this is all for a video on waste, because 
3D printing unfortunately produces a substantial amount of spool waste. And no matter what anybody says, none of this is marked properly for recycling and it's not recyclable. Um, so it's, it's unfortunately landfill. So protopasta, the sort of long story short is, uh, is that they use cardboard spools and they are uh, uh, completely recyclable for that. And then we can also return the spools straight to them. We have no shipping costs or uh, fuel consumption or waste getting the stuff because we just swing by there and grab it, you know, on our way to work or whatever. And then uh, we're supporting a USA supplier. So we improve our supply chain because this last year has been difficult. Any questions so far here? Uh, yeah, quite a few. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Fox just said, uh, Ryan's currently working on his video skills to send you a photo of your links now. Ooh. Um, Ooh, photo of links maybe Oops. coming. Entertainment Incorporated asks, do you play Nerf FPS? Do I play Nerf FPS? So I have a three-year-old, oh, sorry. I have a three-year-old and a four-month-old. Sorry. Oh, just set them aside. We're in the middle of video. <laughs> oh, it's protopasta though. Oh, they won't, no one will know though. <laughs> hey, Greg was, bring, Greg was bringing up a sample of the, a print. You want to show it on camera? <coughs> oh yeah, we can do that. Might not show very well, but we can try. Ooh, one's kind of sparkly. So here's two protopasta. Um, Boy, that's hard to see on here. Here are two proto protopasta. Uh, one of these is protopasta, one is prusa. And so we're going to be switching. That is too hard to see. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's a little blown out. out yeah. Here, up here in the studio. That's all right. Um, and I'm just like giving, you guys are getting a, a ride here. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, there we go. Sorry. We're, we're trying to <clears throat> so new, new stuff here. We're always trying to figure it out. Um, this is our, what's going to be the workshop. So there's going to be workbenches all along that wall. And then these will be clear empty ones for different various projects that pop up because you always need clear workspace. Um, so, but you can see we're, we're still very much in progress in organizing this compared to the rest of the, the actual studio. Um, oh yeah, and here's this random airsoft mag. That is so weird. That means, why are they, say, it says evic.com. It's got my name on it. Why is evic sending me a, an airsoft mag? I am so confused, you guys. <laughs> what is going, okay, I don't even know where to put that because that, And this, I think, is a return. <laughs> all right, so we're getting this all organized. We're also going to be having a big spring, spring cleaning sale, probably starting in late May to June. And it's all the stuff that's in this tub. And then everything on this shelf here will be going, plus a bunch of other things. We just had these stairs put in, so we'll go down the stairs now. Definitely will, especially with those barrels we got from uh, Spectre. We'll, I'm not sure, it, with our video schedule right now, it's honestly gonna be a couple months, and if Hyper comes in there, that might take up a couple videos too. So it might be a while, I, so I can't promise a date, but uh, we'd like to, it's on the list for sure, um, because there's definitely a couple, there's a few little mods. The funny thing is, is you can't really put a bigger spring in there. It doesn't do anything. And a spring spacer, despite other people selling them on Etsy, doesn't do anything either. Um, so go those sellers, <laughs> at least in our testing. And we've, we've tested pretty extensively on the uh, upgrades. So, but it's a sweet blaster. Oh, <clears throat> Martin Will says Eve like, likes to send <coughs> samples out. So it might be. Where's the blaster? <laughs> I, Is it just for the mag? What? No, like they sent a magazine, but I, I don't have the airsoft blaster. I'm so confused. <laughs> Someone at Evic has got to, I guess I'll reach out. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're also one of our suppliers because they're the distributor for jet products in the U.S. Um, because I turned that down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Seth Grimm uh, kind of goes into a lot, a lot of detail, but they're asking, do you expect Hyper to uh, change its consistency 
because of weather. Like in Minnesota, would it be colder? Oh, therefore less sticky. I mean, rubber certainly would. And if it really is like a TPU of some sort, I mean, it, it probably is going to be different in different temperatures. Um, I know reball it definitely is different in cold weather, really cold weather versus warm. Uh, it shrinks just enough that the FPS drops if you try to play uh, reball, which is a reusable paintball. It's just one of the brand of it anyway, 0.68 caliber. Okay. Uh, Dread Pirate Roberts. <coughs> so Ryan set, uh, says that he texted you a teaser of the links. Uh, Ooh, we'll have to do that. Let's do that when we circle back up, if you can remember. Uh, we can I'll show the it. links in theory. I don't know how we show it. I might just have to show uh, the screen. I, I, can, I can do a display capture. Okay, sweet. Um, real quick, so that's coming down the stairs. We just came down, and this is a uh, heart of the shipping department here. Got 3D printed parts on the side. This is our shipping wall. Um, we're set up for two identical packing stations with all the same boxes, all the same tools and everything. Um, currently, we generally only do one. We'll have one person pick, one person pack, but we did this so that when holiday orders come in and the orders are double, we can uh, actually meet the demand and whatnot. And one of the things we love about this place is we actually have light. We have windows. Our last place was a cave. This is sort of our um, label making area and shipping er or the start of the shipping process. So people ship here. They um, go down the aisles and pick, all, pick everything and then they end up back over at the packing station. So this is sort of the start of picking. A lot of different products. And uh, it's your Apple Jeff One fan says watching from the UK at midnight, so I have to go now. Great stream. Oh, thanks for stopping by. Moving into like spring territory, light bulbs on the left, blasters on that side, more light bulbs, more batteries. Then we get into mags, all the other accessories. Um, this is receiving down here, so in theory, these shelves get processed to empty once they're actually uh, done. Uh, <laughs> once we've got them countered and in, it's sort of a constant battle, as you can see, to actually keep up against with the packing and everything that's going. Um, this is sort of our little makeshift corner shop where we do things that make messes, cutting, cutting, and um, this drill. This is for cutting our proton pack things, and we've got you know tube tube cutting station. There's um, several more aisles of inventory here. Uh, Someone's asking, are you going to be reviewing the FDL basic at all? Probably not. I mean, there's so many other blasters and I already owned a few of those, so I'm, d I'm done. Um, someone's asking, will you guys sell the 27 milliamp hour LiPos that power the proton packs? Yes, yes, we definitely will. Um, we've been a little supply constrained on those and I may have to actually get them custom made or custom run. Um, which is from the same vendor, it'd be the same quality pack, just pre-buying hundreds of them instead of buying whatever they happen to have. Um, it's always complicated because the, the trade war that's going on right now is really hitting the LiPo thing. It's the reason the packs cost what they do. Uh, we pay 25% is the trade war penalty and then the original tariff was, uh, I think it's eight and a half or seven and a half. So it's like 32 and a half percent um, of the cost of them and they're a low margin item to begin with so it's it ultimately ends up being where we've got tens of thousands of dollars tied up in lipos that don't actually make a lot of money but are so essential to our hobby and to to modding obviously <laughs> but we'll definitely get them that was a long-winded answer for a very simple question <laughs> sorry <laughs> um let's see i'm gonna keep wandering someone said i see cedas <clears throat> yep there's cedas <laughs> and this is mostly worker aisle. What mod kit or kit for a full blaster would you recommend for a beginner? Oh, mod kit or kit for a full blaster. I mean, start with a spring or just a spring. Start with just a spring swap. Um, go get, you know, grab a Kronos or some or whatever blaster you want. And just do a spring swap. Start there. Some of the spring spring swaps are a lot more difficult than others. It really varies. I mean. For instance, like in the rival line, the uh, probably the the Hades is one of the worst. I'd call that like a four or five star difficulty for springers. Um, for just a swap, just putting the spring in is, is is some work because of the parts getting them in and out. And then others like the um, Kronos would be a great starting one because it's really easy. We've got a really super clear mod guide on that one too. Um, so I think that's that's a good rival blaster to start with. 
Uh, retaliators are a good one for, for standard. Someone asked if you could climb the ladder to give them a bit of a bird's eye view. Yeah, though I think they saw the best view from other side, but we can, we can try go from, this is kind of fun because this is like the center of the warehouse. So there's our studio where we were up there. Printing is way over there. We'll get over there eventually. Receiving that corner where we are in the first aisle we just ran through. And then of course, back to shipping. And a long ways down. Uh, get it out yeah, why not? Are you going to make a little rocket vortex barrel? Um, so we actually had a customer that did one, and uh, Tarek is testing and still still messing with it. We were concerned about performance initially, but it seems like people are probably interested regardless of the performance, so I think we'll do it. Uh, Beast Lively asks if there's any way to super chat. Um, not currently. We haven't enabled it. We might consider it in the future. Is that something people are, are interested in? We definitely w could consider it in the future. We're new to this streaming thing. <laughs> uh, uh, any consideration of making a video on how to do blaster integrations? I, you know, I don't know that I will. And the reason is I am the, like the least qualified person to do a blaster integration. I end up cutting up the blasters, getting super frustrated, and then going back to what I'm really good at, which is electrical mods and 3D printing. So my problem with, I love integrations, like the stuff Mr. Nathan does, just just so good, so good. Um, I, I've got to own one of his blasters that he makes in the future. Um, but I, I'm really not the, I'm not the expert there, so I feel like people would be way better off watching, you know, Mr. Nathan or something because I, I'm just not, I'm not as qualified. I could try, and I probably should try because getting out of your comfort zone is always good. And I do like modifying and, and cutting things up. I just, oh, I don't have the, quite the vision. I can see things in my head and 3D print them and design them, but making, doing those clean lines on those integrations, oh, it is hard. And there are very select few people that are really good at it. So me teaching it was, is all, like, to me is almost laughable. <laughs> It'd be like me teaching you how to ballroom dance and I, Definitely can't ballroom dance. <laughs> Maybe after the Backstreet Boys reunion tour, we can uh, we could just bring, uh, bring bring someone that actually knows better and spotlight them. This is uh, so we're in like more prep area. This is what we're calling the grocery, which is like all the standard hardware that's used across a lot of different products. We've got our um, wire prep station here, and we've got our general prep station here where. If you order any of your 3D printed parts, there are cards up on the wall that explain what the product is and talk about the prep. We're still working on improving this, but what I like to see is a nice empty bench here. We're nicely prepped at the end of the day here. A lot of overflow proton pack stuff. Um, a lot of people were asking about the price. We did pre increase the price in the proton pack because the initial batch, we basically did not charge enough to cover our labor, which was an bit of a nightmare um, but this is a whole bin of like odd either mismatched colors or factory seconds so they're b grades and um, at least i think that's a, this is yeah, a b grade, b grade right it says b grade sweet so this is b grades these will be available at a pretty good discount um, like this one for instance was for bobo but it's a misprint like there's line there are lines there that i'm not happy with so that's a b grade also it comes with a some parts from Drax that I wasn't happy with. <laughs> so um, this will be available at a, you know, at a, at a discount and um, we like to avoid the waste on that kind of stuff and it makes it, lets us recover some of that plastic cost so we're not just throwing it away. This whole area right now is supposed to be clear but because of the proton pack is kind of eaten up with um, all of the different bins of parts. Uh, uh, what? Cage, motors, flywheels, et cetera, would you recommend for a half-length strife? Half-length strife, I would do like a, a 40 millimeter daybreak cage with daybreak wheels if you want to go the 3D printed route. Um, otherwise, I would go with the daybreak CNC cage. Uh, if you're going for more high FPS, you can hit 160 up to 170 on the high end there. If you want HVZ legal, Drax uh, Nick's cage is beautiful. If you want like the best of the best, beautiful machining, beautiful anodizing, just lovely, 
lovely cage, um, but that's a 130 build, so that's more for an HVZ build. Um, you obviously can achieve that same FPS for a lot less cost, but it's about sound and feel and precision, so it's, it's different. Um, but I'm really, really partial to Daybreak cages. We're working on some of our own cages as well. I've got one for the Spectrum done, um, which should be up in the shop after my trip, so maybe a couple weeks. But we are um, slowly going through and making our own cages on stuff because it's uh, become troublesome to like diagnose, adjust, you know, go back and forth with creators, and it makes more sense to kind of deal with our own. But we love the Daybreak geometry. I think Kiriaka do, do, does awesome work and. We're gonna keep going with his wheels for most stuff. So that's right now my probably my favorite. Uh, Jay wrote asks uh, what happened to your orange mod works blaster? Oh, oh yeah. So um, I actually talked with Jim from Orange Mod Works. They essentially, long story short, is they kind of got screwed on their filament provider. They got filament that worked fine when they printed it, and they they kind of had multiple problems along the production line. Not to worry, they have promised me they are A, reprinting everything, rebuilding everything and shipping. Anybody that got a blaster that had the issue, they're, you're all getting blasters that are getting fixed and anybody that didn't get their blaster yet will get the new version that's been fixed. It essentially was stuff got re-sliced that wasn't supposed to be re-sliced on a different profile because the filament was causing problems. And honestly, I feel really bad for them. It, it's a, as a small business, it's, it's, it's really easy for that kind of stuff to happen and it would be lying if I said we haven't had similar problems. Um, there was a situation where we shipped the initial um, FPS caps, and I think I had to reship like 110 orders to, to ship a better version um, that I can't even, this is crazy, I can't even remember what the problem was. Oh, it was that if you were to leave it in a hot car, you could, the spring pressure alone from the stock spring could actually compress it. So we rammed up the infill like crazy but I shipped every single person a replacement. It was 110 orders, and I emailed them manually, individually. So I sent 110 emails by myself, and we reshipped 110 orders, you know, at our expense, and um, gave out discount codes and stuff. It's just stuff happens. We're small businesses. We don't have huge R&D budgets and departments, and so I feel really bad for them. Um, they are going to make it right. They are shipping everybody new blasters. They've been responsive about it. I think they're kind of getting hammered with email requests and things, but um, give, them, give them a minute, they'll, they'll come back to you, and uh, I'll obviously be tracking the process with that and, and reviewing the blaster, because the one thing I want to say about the blaster, I don't have it here because it's at home currently, um, but the grips were beautiful. The grips are the two of the most comfortable ergonomic grips I've held on any 3D printed blaster, which is pretty, I'm kind of a nut on that, so I'm, I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> uh, so hopefully get to share that soon. Here, let's look. Daddy's in the chat. He says, uh, the first time pack's been amazing. Thank you for making it happen. Oh, man. Dude, thanks for buying and supporting. I, I love this stuff so much, and I am I'm really, really thrilled that I get to keep doing this as a business. I'm very, very fortunate, and I couldn't do it without all of you guys and my awesome team here. This is, um, I'm going to go do a little more tour here. This is uh, our production department. So each of these is its own build cell. Uh, this is Little Rocket. So Little Rocket orders, they basically start here. They get built. We've got all the color variations down below. And then they come around and they get finished over here. And then this next station, this is the Percy station. So we've got hoppers on hoppers, all kinds of the Percy's hoppers in fairly large quantities here, preparing for summer heat in case we have print issues. Uh, hurricane station. And then this is our actual proton pack build station where they get packed up, assembled, and shipped. Doesn't look super organized right now, but we're, we're getting a little better every day. And we've got units ready to go. So most orders, if you order a kit, we should have you out in a couple days. If you order a pre-built, it's gonna take a little, a little bit longer. We, we say one to two weeks, and we are confident we can hit that. This is uh, the Jupiter production area. So that's all the Jupiter stuff. If you're wondering why there's always stuff on the countertops here, we have robot floor cleaners, just residential cleaners, but they do a pretty good job of helping keep down the dust somewhat. And, you know, good old box storage. <laughs> Speaking of which, is he... <laughs> Greg, the robot's stuck. Greg found the robot stuck, so... <laughs> this is our um, print tech desk. So this is where Eric and Greg work on uh, repairing printers and stuff. And... Uh, Eric is very happy to have 
more than two and a half feet behind him. Our previous warehouse, he had like, it was like a, it was a shelf right here. And so he, like you couldn't pass him while he was working. <laughs> it was terrible. Oh yeah, here's one of the. I think, I think uh, the fans uh, named it Out of Dust. Yeah, and Dusty Jr. I think are the two names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, this company, Robo Rock, makes some pretty good little vacuums, I have to say. Um, this is print aisle. You'll notice there's a whole bunch of missing spots. Uh, we're in the middle of getting rid of all of our Prusa Minis. If you happen to be in our area and want a local pickup one, we are selling them off. Um, right now, we're not going to ship them. It's just a lot of work to pack and ship those carefully. So if I can sell them locally, I'd rather do that. But um, we're transitioning back to just all Mark III's because they're more reliable overall and they just have performed better um, in every, almost every way. Other than cost. <laughs> uh, Martin Will asks, very happy with my proton pack. Any advice on getting it to feed correctly into an FBL uh, HIR variant? I mean, like a Magwell adapter should do it. I Let's see, that's a standard magazine. I would recommend you just take a rival magazine, hack the bottom off and buy our, we have an adapter for it. Let me go find one just so I'm not like talking about nothing. Um, do you know what it looks like, Perry? Yeah. So Perry is rad because Perry didn't know anything about Nerf before he started, but he's gotten quite knowledgeable by watching all the videos. So was it Martin? Uh, yeah, Morton Will. Morton Will. So we've got this version, which is essentially, it's a swivel, right? But all you do is you cut a magazine and you glue it on here. I, that's probably the easiest way you're going to do it without making a custom 3D printed part. There aren't enough of those HIR nose FDLs out there for, I think, it to be worth me designing something for it. So um, I'd say a magazine adapter to this is probably the easiest way because it takes a normal mag. So you would literally just run this there and then run the power out of the FDL into, into the Proton Pack and you would be, you should be good to go. Uh, are you going to make your own 3D printed uh, Nexus Pro grip design? To like we might. Yeah, I, you know, my thing with the Nexus Pro Grip is that um, it, uh, it the, the stock one's so good. <laughs> like it's one of the better, one of the better grips. So I kind of always approach things in, you know, like I want to improve the worst things about, you know, the, the stuff that has the largest impact. That 80-20 rule, where 20% of your effort is 80% of the results, and that's like that's true in business, it's true in modding, and it's true in life for the most part and like the grip isn't bad so it's not been a high priority i guess for me to to change but i might take a, i might take a stab at it because it's always fun doing something a little more custom and actually now that you mention it it would be a good excuse to just put a grip that i've been playing around with for a while to like redo it properly in fusion it's a grip for an actual blaster but i it, i would like to start over and the grip is a great place to start so it might make sense to just do that and then adapt it to the Nexus, that could be fun. Probably won't be one of my next projects because I've got about 20 products in mind for the next three or four months. Should we head back upstairs maybe? Uh, yeah. Um, That's kind of the warehouse. Oh, wait, office, and then we'll go check out the links. Um, so this is the office. It is not fancy. We're pretty bare bones here. We've got couch. I think someday we'll probably put a TV in here, but with COVID, we're not hanging out here any more than we have to. And we've got, you know, three, four computer stations over here. We're definitely gonna do a little more with this office eventually. But as it stands, I've been dealing with uh, data management and hard drives and hard drive failures and trying to, trying to figure that all out. So yeah, let's run back upstairs though. Yeah. Uh, Boomstick Mods uh, asks, when do you think the updated Jupiter build guide will be up? Oh, Perry, when will it be up? I just, so this is not Perry's fault. I, sh I shouldn't phrase it like that. Um, I've been dragging my feet because we tried something new and I think you're gonna like it. And everybody that's watching, if you either wanna build a Jupiter or if you just have half an hour to spare, we cut a tutorial that used to be an hour down to 30 minutes and I did the voiceover after filming it and we, we filmed without doing voiceover. That sounds a little confusing, but instead of me having to meander and talk and fix, I could focus just on framing, composition, and making sure that the details are in the frame and shown well. 
And so we're hoping, we're hoping that works a lot better and that, um, that it's more concise, it's shorter, it's clearer. And it was a lot more work though, because I had to sit in a closet with an, uh, with a audio recorder and really make sure that we get a good, um, good audio take on it. So I just gave that, those files to Perry today. I would expect we publish that, what, next week? Maybe Thursday. Uh, yeah, uh, next week. Yeah. Next week's Thursday. Probably. Yeah, probably next week by Thursday or on Thursday. That should be good. Let me see if I can do this quick. I think he sent it here. <laughs> yep, I got it. Okay. I'm just... Oh, you're texting it to yourself. <laughs> yeah. That'll do. Oh, dude, that looks so good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Silver Fox, hopefully you're still here. We're going to try to throw this up on screen. Also, can you swi switch me back to real cam? Oh, yeah. Because as fun as... Oh, now it just looks goofy. I just look silly. <laughs> Okay. Oh man, I'm excited for Lynx. Oh, and it says how to darts on it. So cool. I love that Lynx grip too. Um, we'll do that video soon. Okay. Very, very, ooh. Um, Did that work or no? It, it, for some reason, maybe it's because I've got the live stream going on my phone. This is so jank. This is so janky, but. That. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's get more brightness. That'll help. Oh, it doesn't look, it doesn't look as good on the camera screen as it does on here. Colors a lot. It looks beautiful. I can't wait. That's going to be a fun, fun one. Uh, Spectrum mod guide. I got to finish up a few parts designs. Um, so I think probably Joshua was asking about that. Probably won't be until early June would be my, it's the next mod guide we're going to do. So um, Drax sort of beat me to that course. <laughs> um, but we, uh, yeah, trying to do a mod guide a month. I think we lagged a little bit because I took forever on the Jupiter voiceover. So next time I think we do the, the voiceover, the, 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 the mod guide, the plan is do the mod guide, the mod portion, like show it visually, and then turn over here to a microphone to get the audio the same day, but do them separately so I can separate those two parts of my brain. Because the problem is when you're trying to sit here and do like finicky soldering work and also talk, and show it on camera and concentrate. You just cannot do all the things that, as well. Oh, back to that filament. We were talking about um, protopasta earlier. So maybe this is much more clear. Mm -hmm. Which filament do we like better, guys? There's a sparkly one and a non-sparkly. I have to get some, I wanna hear some, see some comments. Um, one of these is protopasta and one is Prusa. Uh, so we're, we're about ready to update our um, filament. Our colors all across the line are gonna get tweaked and changed. Some of them, four of the colors have already been changed and nobody even noticed. <laughs> uh, so we're super excited about that. Uh, Java asks, have I pr had problems with headshot ammo? Um, no, not with recently. I haven't ordered anything recently, but honestly, it's entirely possible they changed factories or something. Um, yeah, really hard to, hard to say. Oh my gosh, we got sparkly and non-sparkly. Yeah, uh, Zach says, got to go now. Thanks so much for the great stream. Later. Yeah, the sparkly thing is hard, right? Because it, some people really like it and some people really don't. And I do or don't, depending on the blaster and what I'm doing. So that's... Uh, KD action, Galaxy Black has already been replaced and it's been protopasta for a bit. So you didn't, no one noticed. We had, it, the, the new color is, is, is similar, it's identical or close enough, um, except it's not getting shipped halfway around the world and I'm not paying duties and tariff and import and waiting on a supply chain that I don't have any control over uh, because frequently Prusa will sell out of colors and then we can't get the filament and then customers email us and we have to start this endless process. But um, super excited about having it, having it local. Sporkly. Yeah, definitely sporkly. <laughs> um, any recommendations for the next step after completing a mod book? I'd probably, if you like the Strife and you want to do something similar, probably go with like the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, Spectrum rather. Uh, otherwise, I would jump into something rival if you want a rival blaster. 
Uh, the Perseus is a pretty awesome blaster. We have a great mod guide for that. Nemesis, same thing. Uh, those are probably the two most effective flywheel blasters. Uh, uh, Anthony to be E asks, what's the best cheap flywheel cave cage? I, I'm all of our fly, 3D printed flywheel cages are about 12 bucks, but the the worker 42.5 clear uh, polycar or uh, ABS cage, excuse me, it's clear and it's injection molded. They're ten dollars and they're actually pretty good cages, can, all things considered. Um, so I'd probably recommend those if you just want the best budget option. Uh, am I a brother, of, a fellow brother of the ADHD? Um, I believe when I was a kid, and my parents might actually be watching today, which would be funny, I think doctors tried to give me medication, um, but I think I'm just high energy. And I'm, I'm really seeing that in my daughter too. She's three and she has endless ener energy and just wants to be stimulated and do stuff all the time, one thing to the next to the next. And um, um, you know, we're talking, she hasn't seen screen, screens aren't part of her life yet as far as like phones yet. And uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely have, I have some energy and a lot of, I'm all over the place for sure. My brain is usually, what's so who the, knows? Uh, what's the <laughs> difference in composition with the sparkle versus the non-sparkle? Does it make it brittle or weak? No, the um, strength of these two parts will be identical as far as sparkle versus non-sparkle. Um, draw, oh, drawings and dot, drawing co dot animations asks, am I working on any new 3D printed blasters? I've been puttering around for a couple years on a rival project and I think I'm going to start over and do something different altogether. We're definitely wanting to go that way, but I for the time being, after finishing the proton pack, I really want to do some, a lot of small little projects first. My thing with the 3D printed blasters is that I have to compete with everything that's out there, right? So it has to be solid, unless it's for personal use, which I'm still doing some of that as well. But it's, it's like I'm not going to release anything that's not really solid, in my, in my opinion, like the best that I can do. And so if I haven't hit that, uh, the, the bar is high. And some of the 3D printer blasters, I won't say anything specifically by name, but some of the community blasters are super janky. And they are really cool, but they're more like a beta or an alpha or a proof of concept. And this is not to degrade them in any way. They're just not, they're literally not sellable at the scale we're running this shop. So for us to release something, it's got to be rock solid. It's got to be reliable. It's got to not cause customer problems. It's got to be a good customer experience. It can't have, it can't be broken, um, you know, like on the first use, or it can't have the trigger break immediately, or or whatever um, design flaw or issue. And I'm not saying all of those have that. I mean, obviously, like Captain Slug stuff is rock solid. Um, for you know, for the most part, the Talon Claw is a, a beast of a blaster, and it's great. The Lynx is, from what I've heard, very very excellent. So, I do want to do something. The question is scaling it and making it. Um, successful enough. But I will say that when we do release something, it will be very smart. Someone, Rival hammer shot. planning on doing a blindfolded uh, strife mod. Any tips? A blindfolded strife mod. That sounds like a fun challenge. Oh, I think, um, man, that would be a fun challenge like with a bunch of us YouTubers or something. We should do stuff like that and we don't. I mean, I should speed mod a strife against Drac. That would be, he's done more strifes. And then we should speed mod something I've done more of. Something like that would be fun. Blindfold is, is pretty bonkers though. That's pretty cool. I, good luck not burning yourself. Um, I would probably, before you do it, practice by touch, like actually spending some time touching the blaster and remembering where things are. Mm -hmm. Man, how much do you do? I could probably do a Strife blindfolded with enough hours, and I could definitely do a Nemesis. Could I do... Oh, that would be so rough, because the, the grinding and the cutting would be... I could do the Strife. I could definitely do a Strife blindfolded. It would not be... It would probably take me hours, because it would be so slow trying to remember... I'm visualizing the parts. I'm like, okay, cut away cut away the whole area under the flywheel cage, level that out, cut out the, the, the switch area for the switch plate. I know what that would feel like. The wire path would be a bit funky. Yeah, it's doable. Man, feel, feel everything before you start, like a couple days in a row. That's what I would do. <laughs> that sounds so fun. Yeah. Speed build Jupiters, that'd be, I could do that one. 
Anthony to B uh, says, uh, "What is your favorite 3D plant food blaster?" I'll, I'll, Ooh. I'll say like. Let's say I not. Me. Yeah, not us. Oh, favorite 3D printed blaster outside of our stuff. Um, that got asked last time, and it, you know my opinions change a lot. I, man, um, hold on. Talonclaw Talon is still one of my favorites because um, I just think that one that. Um, if you guys don't know Silver Fox yet, he's the one that did my Talon Claw, and I just, I just love this blaster. I, the sad thing is, is he did this like right before pandemic for me, and um, we didn't get to play much since. It's got this sweet filament, but Talon Claw is a sweet blaster. Um, I don't, I'm trying to think of other favorites if I had to pick just, just one. I just got. It's hard to give this like a full. I should have brought the camera with me, but that's okay. Oh no, did I leave it at home? Where's the new blaster? <laughs> oh, it's over on the video shooting. Oh, I'm coming, I'm coming. This is... I just got um, the gecko from Sea Yard Nerf. Uh, over on Etsy, and this thing is pretty darn cool. Um, I, I I don't know what the assembly is like on this. I might actually have to talk to him about licensing or something, depending on what his demand is like. This is sort of a bit along the lines of the of the zinc. Obviously, we're gonna have a full video on this coming. We're just a little bit backlogged on the videos, but it just has a very good good feel overall. I think these probably take some serious time to put together, is my guess. Um, but I love the use of the angled mag, and it's actually surprisingly comfortable for being a mag through grip. It's really nice work, Sea Yard Nerf. I'm, I'm excited to see this one. So this might be a favorite right now, but I haven't, you know, transparency, I haven't played with it yet. I've just like shot it around the studio here. So it's not quite the same as actually going to a game and like using it day in, day out. Um, that's not that I'm expecting anything to go wrong or whatever, just, you know, that's just <laughs> the nature of right now. But that might be one of my favorites right now. Um, man, can't wait to do that video too. And then integrated holster. Sweet. Uh, a couple of people are asking uh, about the arm mounts, the sliding arm mounts. Yes. So actually, our, our only the products are ready so with some minor tweaks. The problem I, that we're waiting on is me. It's just I need to spend more time trying to source and find a manufacturer for the straps. Because we have kind of a specific, it's a one inch strap, which is pretty standard, but we wanted to have some give and some elastic. And all of the off the shelf options we tried to get really didn't work. Um, just, you know, direct something that we could buy. Um, so it's either we launch without the strap and people have to go find or make their own straps, or we launch with a strap that I'm not happy with, or we wait. And so right now I've been kind of going with wait, though we'll see how that goes. I, we're not at full running full capacity right now, so we definitely are ready to start releasing new products. So there's definitely a lot coming over the next uh, month, month, couple months for sure. Proton pack adapter for the Prometheus. Okay, so the Nemesis, yeah. I'm learning this, so what that, that Prometheus is the big, big oh, okay. beast. Um, so I have one started for the Nemesis, but the problem is, um, the problem is the size of the part. The one I've got for the Nemesis is very similar to the Prometheus in that it replaces this whole thing with a top candle, handle carry and then the, let me just take this off and explain. So the way the Nemesis one's gonna work is it's the full size of this, but it's kind of a flat plate that goes all along with a carry handle here for the Nemesis. And then it, the balls feed in on the right or the left side through a swivel, a dual 90 degree swivel connector. The problem is the thing is absolutely massive. It prints in like four parts and I don't know how to sell it without it costing like $40, which sounds crazy. This one's even bigger. I mean, there might be a way that I just make a tiny plate that's just this bottom. Actually, now that you made me take a look at this, this one might be easier, but it just seems kind of clunky. Like I can make, so if I'm looking down the bottom of this, it's like, what, do you, what part of this do you want it to cover? If I make it just cover this hole right here, and then you glue it in place, that could be an option, but I sort of like the elegance of a non-permanent solution. So my, my, my adapter for the, 
the Nemesis is one that fits into the locking points of the two ends, but this one's even larger, so I, I just can't, it wouldn't be cheap, I guess is the way, is the way to put it, unfortunately, just due to the, the size and the amount of plastic. Um, it is a good blaster for the Proton Pack. Uh, a lot of people ask me, why don't I just, you know, shove it in here, like have the hose just go in there, which sounds like an easy solution, but that's not quite how it works, and you're losing the advantage of like this thing doesn't fire that consistently compared to the Proton Pack. The Proton Pack can feed very consistently. This can't feed very consistently. Um, and so if you were to just shove it in here, A, you might actually jam this up because you would have to, you know, every time you turned it on, it would, sh it would probably shove too many down in there and it might clog up. But then B, it, it wouldn't be as smooth as running it directly into the flywheels. Um, obviously, you know, if, it, if it's not obvious, I mean, I, I have a, Proton Pack Blaster in mind, but the way that I designed it is probably not as feasible um, for production. Like it's so big and so so many parts that I just don't. I think it, I see it being too expensive to sell assembled. Um, so I'm working on something else as a solution instead. But it might be it might be a while, and we'll see what happens with Hyper. Obviously, we'll pivot to doing both if Hyper ends up being really solid. Yep, he's actually an animated character, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I go by platypus on, on a lot of uh, different socials, but that's... You are, the, you are the platypus on our Discord. Oh, yeah. Um. <laughs> uh. We got about a little less than 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, why have you stopped carrying happy fakes uh, and carrying men guns instead? Is it just a list of um, I never would have carried uh, AccuFakes in the first place if I had understood that uh, Hasbro has a patent on, on the design. So importing those and selling them is illegal. It's not, um, it, I did not even, I didn't realize that they were actually, I actually didn't know there was a patent on them when we were first selling them. So that's the reason they disappeared on Amazon as well. It's, um, they're trademarked, uh, or they're patented, uh, utility patent on the head design. So as soon as I found that out, we stopped carrying them. We carried the alternates instead, even though they are, they were great and there's nothing wrong with the AccuFakes, but uh, yeah, it infringes on Hasbro's IP and I definitely don't want to be, be dealing with Hasbro. So yeah, fortunately it doesn't seem like they've got a patent of any sort on uh, hyper ammo. Will you carry the cheated 2.0 on your store? If so, how soon they already, are available? They're already ordered. I think they're on the boat too, so probably a month. Maybe it's, it's always hard to guess with time frames, and it's really frustrating because reviewers and other people that order directly from China will get it way before us because they get air shipping. We literally cannot afford right now air shipping is we used to buy some of some of the early samples and like right at release we'd buy some air and then get larger quantity in sea freight. But the price on air right now is so high. Um, I've been charged as much as uh, $20 a kilogram. Um, that's $20 for 2.2 pounds. Uh, so you can imagine that's not even two cheetahs and it's $20 for me to get it to me wholesale plus import taxes. I mean, it's just not import duty rather. Uh, it's just not feasible. So. Yeah, it's hard to guess, but probably three, three to five weeks would be my, my guess. We've, we've got them ordered. I think we've got 200 coming. Um, hopefully those are popular. They look really good, so I'm excited. Any news on the Worker Phoenix as a shell slash build it yourself? Um, it's still on my list to actually, to actually coordinate. We've got so many pending orders right now with Worker. I wanted to wrap up everything we're on first before doing any more custom requests and, and that sort of thing. Um, I think the tail end of our last order just came, so we're getting close and I'll, I'll get those ordered. That's definitely a plan though, because I think the shell is cool and there's a lot we can do with it. So I think it'd be really nice to have just as a shell and not assembled and then let people get in at that lower price point and mod their own thing, wire their own thing up instead of just the only as a finalized finished plaster. Uh, the Spira, did you, did you ask them about why the screws are on you? Oh, I have not yet. That's on my list, but I am going to reach out to Spira. Um, I also need to just write them an email saying thanks for sending them because they were super fun. 
They are really cool. Not again, not sponsored. I just love the product. They are, yeah, and they the are Pirate Two sold out within. A, yeah, I know. Uh, a day of I was, announcing the pre-order. I was gonna buy the Spyro Two as well, and I like hesitated for maybe 24 hours, and then I went back and it was sold out. But um, it looks like very similar. They've just minor changes on the Spyro Two, but the performance is better. It doesn't drip as much, and uh, it yeah, which is awesome. They basically took it and made it better, a true 2.0, but it, it still has all the beautiful features. Short Study Smart Kid says, uh, the Proton packs uh, were delayed because of the ever given. <laughs> I wish I could claim that, but uh, delays were, we had the parts to do the Proton Pack nine months ago. And that includes everything. Like we were ready. It was just, we had to move, we had to figure out things. And I had to finalize so many little adapters and things. And I still have more adapters to, you know, to finish up and, and whatnot. So as much as I'd like to blame it on something else, you know, it's more like life gets in the way. Spam, spam suggests that it might be because Lonnie Johnson was left-handed. <laughs> Is he really? I, I don't know. I, I How cool would that be if he I influenced it? I tried looking that up on Wikipedia or something, and it says nothing about what hands his dominant hand. Lonnie Johnson is my hero. I just want to go to Atlanta and hunt you know, go find him. I, he's, yeah, super cool dude. I love that he took Hasbro on. They dragged him through it and they finally paid him. And I, I feel like, it seems like it was well-deserved. Okay, we've got five minutes left. Thank you everyone for coming in. Um, uh, plans to license Hummingbird and our Gecko. We talked about that earlier. Maybe, I would consider Gecko, but I need to know what the assembly is like. A lot of these 3D printed community blasters are, you know, super, super cool, but they are not very production friendly, meaning the prints don't print as reliably because they weren't designed with printing. It's one thing to print one blaster and sell it to somebody. And I'm not using, this isn't really a specific example because I haven't tried to print this or anything, but it's one thing to sell one blaster to someone. But when someone wants a, you know, when there's a demand for 500, 1,000, it, it, all the issues, you know, it's a, they compound and, and the errors cause more and more issues and it's a, it's a big problem. Yeah. Uh, Luchasaurus says, howdy. Hey! How's it going? Um, Drawing Can't wait to play again. Asks, I did a barrel swap on the Nexus. Would it be a good idea to put the old Nexus barrel, barrel in a stand? Does it fit? I don't know if it's the same size. You probably could cut it down and, I mean, obviously cut down the length, but diameter should be a good diameter for this FAMF. It's got a pretty good, Falcon Fire's got a pretty good plunger tube. I, I would think that would be doable. I don't think it's the right size barrel to work natively, but I could be mistaken. Yeah. I'm sure Ryan at Silver Fox would have an immediate answer for that because he's actually building SPAMPs. We wanted to do SPAMPs too, but at the time we just didn't have the space. And now we have the space but not the time, maybe. I could use like 10 more employees and that's not, I, we're not hiring. <laughs> but I, my team is amazing here, but we're all doing a lot every day and there's always more to do. So there's, there's no, no shortage of, of tasks. And at the end of the day, we just have to decide, you know, what are we gonna, what are we gonna do today? What are we gonna focus on? And uh, customers come first. So there'll, there'll always be that too. Bam just said, I'm glad just to see my project bin on the bench, super stoked. <laughs> awesome. Yep, and it's there, ready, ready for me to build it. Mm -hmm. Might be Greg if we want to get it out earlier, though. <laughs> though I built the first 50 pre-built, completely wired up. If you have a pre-built, I built it. Uh, sorry, I, didn't, I missed it, Boomstick. Uh, when, uh, he asks, when do you think we'll get more Spectre Scar Barrels? Uh, Spectre Scar Barrels, oh, I'm not sure we've got that ordered yet, so I'll get that on the next one. I know we ordered more Mark II barrels. I'll double check and make sure we get it, get it reordered, but it'll probably be a bit, because his he doesn't just constantly make stuff. He does like a, a run of one item at a time, so it kind of varies, but I'll reach out and make sure we get it reordered. Uh, we don't have it on order currently, so it might be a little bit. With 1,500 SKUs, it has turned into quite a challenge to actually keep everything in stock. We've got... Um, about 65 vendors and 1,500 SKUs. So 
uh, it may not seem like that much in the warehouse, or maybe it does, I don't know. <laughs> but it's, it's a lot to keep track of. And we try to use software, but software doesn't work because people, people's buying habits are not logical and there's no way to predict it. One month we'll sell you know, 25 of an item and the next month it might be 300. And there goes our, you know, our 12 month stock. <laughs> Oh, we are, we're ordering now, so it's still going to be, I'm sad to say, it's still going to probably be a couple months, uh, realistically, with the shipping. I'd say at least two, two and a half months. Um, so if you need ammo now, go, go grab it from Headshot or wherever else. Um, we had to switch providers. Headshot basically wanted to own Amazon, so they just bottomed out the price, and their price was so low that we just didn't feel like we could compete, so we had to find a new factory and negotiate better price, and... Uh, Foam Blast has been working on that with me, and um, they've been doing all the legwork there. But um, we just found our bags because we still have a bunch of bags from the first one, so we got to ship our bags to the manufacturer and hopefully get those going. It'll be in the next couple months. Uh, spam uh, CF. He's at a two conference call. So. Sweet man, we'll get your blast your uh, kit out soon. Uh, uh, drawing code animations. We already answered that. Uh, would you rather play with a caliber and or a talon claw? Oh, talon claw. I mean, only because it's slightly more compact and, and it's it's a little a little cleaner than the the caliber. Um, and I like short darts, short, you know, all the way. I'm like sitting here. I compulsively play with these until the heads are ripped off. It's terrible. I got to stop doing that. I don't want to ruin beautiful darts, good darts. But yeah, I, I'm a short dart guy for sure. Um, and uh, I have a, a special something coming for short darts, so I'll be extra. That's another little hint. <laughs> uh, I've dropped two hints. Um, I think that's going to do it for today. Thank you for stopping by, for, for tuning in, and for watching, and for supporting the shop, and for everything. Uh, we'll keep doing this stream. We're going to mix up the times, but we'll try to do one every month. And um, I might also try play do some home streams where I jump on... Uh, like the Nerf FPS game might be kind of fun. I am pretty bad at first person shooters, especially these days compared to how good players are now on PC, even worse, because I, I, was, I was console for forever. But I think it would be fun to get on there and stream because it's Nerf. Uh, so I might do some of that as well at some point, but I gotta get set up for that because I've never done that. Should be simple enough, but we'll, we'll figure that out. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, as always, until next time, I'm out of darts. Except now I have a dart. Does not compute. <laughs> <laughs>